One simple and misinformed way this concern arises comes when we are asked, what happens if electricity is cut off? The answer is that Alcor uses liquid nitrogen to keep patients cold, and the laws of physics keep liquid nitrogen cold, not electricity. Liquid nitrogen refills are needed every so often, but electricity is not required for current patient care systems. But more generally, it is an entirely reasonable question to ask how alcohol will sustain itself for the duration of your cryopreservation. Let me address this in terms of alcohol's financial and organizational stability. On the financial side, obviously it's crucial to be able to pay the costs of continuing patient care, costs that will be incurred for decades to come. In 1997, Alcor created an irrevocable patient care trust. This trust was established to ensure the security of the funds allocated to the long-term care of Alcor's patients. The trust holds the mortgage of the building housing Alcor's patients, as well as majority interest in the ownership of the building. The rest of the trust investments are held at the investment firm of Morgan Stanley Smith Barney. Using a conservative estimate, the funds should generate more than enough money to cover patient maintenance indefinitely. The idea is to use earnings to pay for patient care while leaving the capital untouched. Indeed, that capital should grow over time. If the growth of the trust exceeds patient care storage costs, we may be able to fund research into the technology of patient repair and resuscitation. In addition to the patient care trust, we have an endowment fund whose purpose it is to provide long-term support to operations. No more than 2% of the endowment may be dispersed each year. On the organizational side, let me first point out that Alcor was founded in 1972, almost 42 years ago. As a non-profit, tax-exempt organization, we are structured so as to last a long time, without having to worry about generating profits for investors. Alcor's board of directors is also set up to provide continuity of purpose over a long period of time. Like most other non-profit organizations, new board members are elected to that position by existing board members. All board members are required by Alcor bylaws to be Alcor members. Board members have a strong incentive to choose carefully because the success of Alcor and the survival of our members, including our board members, is heavily dependent on the abilities and character of future boards of directors. Alcor's self-perpetuating board, which seeks the fundamental goals of the organization as described by the mission statement, dates back to Alcor's founding in 1972. Over those decades, the board has steered the course through a wide range of circumstances and sometimes turbulent times as we have grown from a few people to an organization with almost 1,000 members. I'm Max Moore. Thanks for watching this video. If you found it interesting, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, check out our website, and consider becoming an associate member.